Rachel and I are back with our second video now to show you how to put together the Linden sweatshirt. If you want to see how to do the applique, which we've done here, you have just have to go back to the previous video and we'll tell you exactly how to do it. But I'm going to show you the first step of what to do to put together your Linden. So this is a basic raglan sleeve sweatshirt. And so you can see the, this is where the sleeves are going to be attached. It's very simple. And the front piece has two single notches, one on each sleeve, okay? And the back has double notches, so you know which part is which. And each sleeve will have a single notch on one side, just like that, and a double notch on the other. And you're just matching up the notches. So this is our first step is putting them right sides together, matching up the single notches, and we're gonna pin each side. So we're back and I'm gonna start sewing the seams on the shoulders. We're using a quarter inch seam allowance, which is narrower than normal patterns, but the linden requires a quarter inch seam allowance. So once you have got the front half of your sleeve attached to the front portion of your sweatshirt, you now need to attach the back side of your sleeve to the back. So this is where you've got a double notch to look for and you're just going to line those up with the double notch on your sweatshirt in the diagonal seam there and you're going to sew those in the same way as you did the front. is the neckband and I know some of you find this very tricky so we'll take you through it step by step so what I've done to start with is I've taken the neckband and I've sewn it together on the short end using a quarter inch seam allowance and I've what you're going to do is you're going to fold it wrong sides together so you're folding both the raw edges together in half like that and I'm going to pop a pin in there I've gone ahead and pinned the rest of the band but it's basically just taking it into quarters. So I'm taking either edge like that, and then I'm taking the middle points like that as well. And we've corresponded these pins with the same markings or some notches on the actual neck of the, the top. So you can see there's one at the center back, center front, and then there's one at the midway points. There's one there and there's one at the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to match up the pins with the notches. That's the first step. You'll obviously start with the seam on the back because you don't want the seam on the front. So all we're going to do is we're going to match up that back point and transfer the pin right sides together. This can get a bit fiddly because the bands do tend to want to twist and shift and curl and do some lovely things you are allowed to swear it's fine <laughs> <laughs> right so i'm just going to match up the center front one and then i will bring it round and find the midway points there it is match that up and this can this um, way of putting a band on can be done for any kind of neck band or, uh, or hem band. It doesn't matter what the top is. As long as you've got a stretch fabric, it can be done this way. So I've done my pinning now, but just to clarify, I don't think I said earlier, well, the notches around the neckline, we have added those ourselves just to help with the pinning of the, the neck band. Um, so all you need to do is take each section and find the midpoint and put a little snip in. And you can do this with any top, but we've done this obviously with this one. And the reason for this, um, the pinning and evening out the neck band all the way around is you want the neck band to sit flat. And so you want the easing that's going on around the neck 
neck to be done in an even manner so you don't get big clumps that's too big for the top it just needs to be spread out around the neckband so once you've got all the four pins in what we're going to then do is we're going to then see how much excess we've got so you can see i've got a little bit of excess here so you either need to stretch then you'll have to stretch one or the other to match so i'm going to stretch it slightly grab a pin and i'm going to sort of I, I, what i tend to do is find a midpoint because it, again it's it's evening out this excess that we've got there so that you can then see i've got a little bit of excess there and a little bit there i can then stretch it again between the two pins and it's evening it out and then popping another pin in it will end up like a crazy hedgehog with so many pins in but there's no other way of doing it this is one of those things that just needs a gajillion pins in order to get a good result so again i'm folding it in half i'm stretching it out trying to find the middle so evening out that excess, pop a pin in, and then taking each smaller section and repinning it again. I would definitely do this with small pins, the kind that you can sew over, because then you're not releasing any of that excess to places that you don't want it to be around the neckline. I think sometimes with while you unpin it, it can get out of hand. So ideally you want to keep the pins in all the way and you may have to stretch it as you're sewing it. You just have to be aware. It's one of those things, each neckband will be different because each fabric is different. So it's all pinned now and I'm just gonna start sewing. Um, I'm using a stretch stitch, which I have on my machine, which is this little sideways lightning bolt zigzag. If your machine doesn't come with a stretch stitch, then you just want to use the smallest, narrowest zigzag you've got and the reason for the stretch stitch is obviously with it going over your head it will need to stretch so it's probably best to use a stretch stitch rather than get any broken stitches so i'm just going to go ahead i'm going to stretch it as i go to make sure that it's all evenly distributed find my foot pedal and off we go So now we've got our neck bands on, the next thing that we need to do is to sew the underarm and side seam and that's sewn all in one seam line. So you need to take your sleeve and fold it in half to bring your underarm seams together. And then we're just going to pop a pin in there to join those seams together. And then in one seam we're going to sew from the top of the sleeve along the sleeve seam and then we'll pivot when we get to the underarm and continue down along the side seam. So I'm going back to my normal stitch for this um, because um, we don't need a stretch stitch for this one. That part of it doesn't need to stretch that much. And I'm just gonna go carry on with my quarter inch seam allowance. Moving on to cuffs now. So you've got two small cuff pieces and I've just sewn them together on the short end and all we want to do is we're going to fold it just like we did with our neckband, fold it in half wrong sides together matching up that seam and we're going to take the sweatshirt and we're going to pop the cuff over the sleeve matching up the side seams on both you will have to do a little bit of easing, but it's not anywhere near as drastic as it was on the neckband. You might just have to stretch it a little bit to make it fit. And I've lost my side seam. There we are. Found it. So I'm going to start pinning and then I'll get it sewn on at a quarter of an inch again. So the last step is to attach the hem bands um, and these are done pretty much in the same way as the cuffs and the neck bands. The only difference is that your hem band comes in two pieces so you need to sew them right sides together on the short ends um, to make one long piece. Um, but once you've done that you're going to do exactly the same thing. You're going to fold it wrong sides together matching the seams 
to make one big loop and then that is going to be attached onto the bottom edge of the sweatshirt so just like before we're feeding it on top so that all of the raw edges are matching and the seams are matching I'm going to go ahead and pin that all around the bottom of the sweatshirt and then stitch it in place so here we are, ready for the big reveal of our Christmas jumpers. <laughs> Drum roll, please. Uh, One, <laughs> two, three. Ta -da! Ta -da! <laughs> has, I need to come up. Stand up so we can see him in his glory. Have you named the snowman? Uh, no, maybe I should. Hmm? I don't know. Maybe I should leave it up to you, ladies. He looks like a snowman version of Poirot to me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he just Slightly needs a monocle. Jaunty. <laughs> I was tempted to sew a monocle on him. Yes. Um, but no, I think it should be something like Humphrey. Humphrey the snowman. <laughs> there you go. And I clearly have my delicious pudding, <laughs> which uh, Nikki keeps wanting me to do that, but I'm not sure anyone needs to see no, that. No, no can't needs unsee to see it that. now. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> live on YouTube. Yes. Now. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we really enjoyed making them. A bit of festive fun. Yes. And uh, hopefully you will follow the videos and make one of your own. If you do, we oh, would we'd love really that. love to see it. Um, so <laughs> comment below with a link to wherever you're sharing it. Um, yes. Or you can tag us on Instagram. I'm She Sews Vintage. And Nikki I'm Sobby 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 Sewing. Sewing. Um, Tag us on there. We'd <coughs> love to see your Christmas jumpers. We and would. don't forget that it can also be mm. included in the hashtag My Xmas Jumper with what Corrine did next, um, yes. where you can win, win some prizes. lovely prizes for your Christmas jumpers. There'll be some too. prizes that we can win this time. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, comment below with any other videos you'd like to see from us. Yes. And make sure you give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching. Just some little festive cheer. And we will end this video with a little photo montage of As us always. being very silly in our yes. Christmas jumpers. Yes, we can't be anything other than silly in our Christmas jumpers. <laughs>